The Rubik's Cube was invented in 1974 by Professor Erno Rubik, and since then, many other types of twisty puzzles have been made. But back in 1988, a computer program called Magic Cube 4D was developed that simulated four-dimensional Rubik's Cubes. But what the hell is the fourth dimension? You've probably seen this famous gif of a 4D hypercube rotating before, but it's not actually 4D. You know how when you were bored in like 6th grade you draw a cube by drawing two squares and then connecting them with lines? But those lines for the third dimension aren't 90 degrees to the other lines because of the projection onto 2D. Another way to draw a cube in 2D is like this. Now let's add Rubik's Cube colors to it. But this view is unhelpful because a side that's closest to us is blocking our view. So we'll just get rid of that side, leaving us with a view of the inside of the cube. But to a two-dimensional being, this view is still unhelpful because all they can see is the outer square. They can't see the inside. To fix this, we'll move the sides away from each other. Now we just think of the same process but with one more dimension. Instead of connecting squares with lines, let's connect cubes with lines using this style. What we get is the tesseract. But where exactly is the fourth dimension? Well, it's represented by these connecting lines that are technically 90 degrees from the others, it just doesn't look that way due to the projection. Now let's add Rubik's Cube colors, but again we run into the same problem, where the side that's closest to us in the fourth dimension obstructs our view. So let's just remove that side and do some rotations. But this view is still unhelpful to us because we can't see the inside of the cube, so let's just make the sides go further away from each other, and voila! This is the 4D Rubik's Cube, specifically the 3x3x3x3, or 3 to the 4 for short. There's actually four types of pieces, so instead of giving them specific names like corner or edge, we just call them by the number of stickers they have. It has 8 1-colored, or 1C pieces, 24 2C, 32 3C, and 16 4C pieces, which is a new type of piece in four dimensions that has four colors. The 2C pieces still have two orientations, but 3C pieces have six orientations, and the 4C pieces have 12 orientations. All of this culminates in something that's way more complex than the 3D puzzle. Other 4D puzzles in the Magic Cube 4D program include tesseracts of all sizes, the simplex, which is like a pyraminx, a bunch of different things called duo prisms, some horrible things that don't even have names, and the 120 cell, the 4D equivalent to the megaminx. But nowadays, there's a bunch of different programs. There's Magic Cube 5D, Magic Cube 7D, and Magic Puzzle Ultimate, which lets you make almost any puzzle you can imagine in any dimension you want. These computer programs are really cool, but they're just that, computer programs. Cubers want something they can touch. They want to be able to pick up a puzzle, twist it, turn it, solve it, and put it back down. They want to be able to smash it, break it. But all of this begs the question, is it possible to physically build a four-dimensional Rubik's Cube in real life? For 25 years, there really wasn't any progress towards answering this question, but in 2013, the legendary puzzle designer Oscar van Deventer invented the Roadblock Cube. This piqued the interest of many hypercubers because, I mean, just look at it, it looks similar to the view of 4D cubes in MC4D. The Roadblock Cube caught the attention of Melinda Green, one of the developers of Magic Cube 4D, and a professional crow enthusiast? Anyways, Melinda saw this puzzle, which inspired her to pursue the idea of a physical 2 to the 4 instead of 3 to the 4. This is because a 2x2 two two in any number of dimensions is literally just corner pieces, so a 2 to the 4 would be much easier to build than a 3 to the 4. Throughout 2013 and 2014, Melinda got in contact with Oscar, and they tried to think of any possible mechanism for a physical 2 to the 4. She sent him this diagram of the rotations involved, and he then produces beautiful rendering of the puzzle. But after much thinking, neither of them could think of a mechanism for it. 
Melinda then spent some more time thinking about 4D rotational mechanisms and came up with an interesting solution. After an initial test to see if a symmetrical four-colored cube as a piece would work, she created this rendering. The aha moment came when she realized that the rotations would give access to more than two twisting planes, allowing for scrambling. Back then, most hypercubing communication occurred on a mailing list, and Melinda made a post to the mailing list explaining her discovery but unfortunately there weren't many responses. Two years later, in 2016, Melinda was watching this YouTube video by Mathologer about magnetic dice Rubik's cubes. It inspired Melinda to use a mechanism purely based on magnets, and in February 2017, she built the first prototype. Hello folks, uh, Melinda Green here uh, with great news. Uh, I've implemented my four-dimensional Rubik's cube, my two by two by two by two. It was glorious. The first ever physical representation of a freaking four-dimensional 2x2 two two was in her hands. But it had one major problem. As you can see, if I do turns like this, the red and orange stickers stay separated from the rest of the colors. This essentially means that the puzzle isn't able to reach all of the possible states that the virtual puzzle is. For analogy, that's the same as if the 2x2x2 two by two by two could only be scrambled like this. See how the red and orange stickers aren't going to the other sides? So it's not able to reach all the states that it should have. In order to fix this, we need to find some sequence of moves to four-dimensionally reorient the puzzle. But this turns out to be impossible if you're only using legal moves. We really just need some way to rapidly disassemble and reassemble the puzzle in the same state, just four-dimensionally rotated. Finding such a sequence was a maddening task, but it eventually became what we know today as the gyro algorithm. But there was another problem. Former hypercuber Matthew Sheeran pointed out that the current magnet configuration wouldn't work after a gyro. So to fix this, the amount of magnets in the puzzle needed to be doubled from 192 to 384. The 2x2x2x2 two by two by two by two was finally working, and a second iteration was made in April of 2017 using 3D printing from a company called Shapeways, which just so happened to offer 8 colors, 6 of them being standard Rubik's Cube colors, and the other two were pink and purple. Anyways, Melinda then showed her creation to Don Hatch, her friend and one of the other co-founders of Magic Cube 4D. But he said that the puzzle wasn't a true 4D analog of the 2x2, and apparently he called it a pollution of the pure mathematical world? Yikes. Melinda mentioned this on the mailing list, but then everyone said that Don was wrong and that it did work. Controversies aside, it was finally all working. The first 3D printed puzzles were assembled, magnetized, and shipped out and the first recorded solver in the official Hall of Fame was Bob Hearn. Melinda made a video fully explaining the puzzle in detail in December 2017, which now has over 50,000 views. In April 2018, there was an event called the Gathering for Gardner Conference. Royce Nelson, the guy who made the Magic Cube 5D and Magic 120 cell programs, was actually attending that conference, and as it turned out, Erno Rubik was too. And Royce just happened to have a 2x2x2x2 two by two by two by two with him, and he got the opportunity to show it to Erno. Now, it was reported that Erno's only comment was that none of the derivative puzzles matter and only his original invention is important. Absolutely based. A month later, in May 2018, a YouTuber called Cuberly, formerly known as Ken Chris Solve, formerly formerly known as Haribo41296, made some videos about the 2x2x2x2. His three videos now have over 100,000 views combined, exposing the world of hypercubing to a bigger audience than ever before. And because of all this new recognition, many people bought the puzzle, but it was still pretty expensive due to the cost of 3D printing and the labor of manual assembly. Fast forward to March of 2021, and that's when I got interested in hypercubing. I actually remember watching Cube Release 2x2x2x2 videos back in 2018, but I didn't get into it at the time and I just thought it was like some weird puzzle. Anyways, I found out about Magic Cube 4D and I downloaded the program and made a YouTube video about my progress and process of solving the puzzle, the, the 3x3x3x3. Then I joined the mailing list, but I didn't really like how slow the communication was, so I made a Hypercubers Discord server, which you can join from the, from the link in the description. Um, and the server now has over 300 members, there's some really good conversations on there, so you should definitely join if you're interested in that. And it's also important for the plot of this documentary too. 
Anyways, in 2022, Melinda succeeded in getting the pieces of the 2x2x2x2 mass produced. This means that they would no longer need to be 3D printed, reducing the price from over $200 to just under $50. This newest version feels super good. It feels just like a high-end GAN cube, like the plastic is just super nice. So you can check out Melinda's website in the description below to learn how to buy one of these things. The 2x2x2x2 is an amazing puzzle, but little did we know, this was just the beginning. One mysterious day in December 2021, Melinda posted this image to the Hypercuber server with three layers of the 2 to the 4 combined, and jokingly called it a 2x2x2x3. These types of puzzles are called hypercuboids, and they can be found in the Magic Puzzle Ultimate program. In addition to the 16 four-colored pieces, it also has eight three-colored pieces. So, as you can see, it's basically just a 2x2x2x2, but with an extra middle layer. Some sides can only do 180 degree turns, which actually makes the puzzle easier to solve. But the question remains if it's possible to build a hypercuboid based on Melinda's 2x2x2x2 design. So, not only do we have to design a new type of piece, but we have to make sure that it fits with the other pieces. After Melinda posted that image to the server, Luna, a member of the Hypercubers Discord server and a very cool duo prism solver, started sketching out some ideas. Her solution was to divide the edges of a cube into 12 little sections like this. And because there are 12 sections, we just need to group three sets of four sections together. That way, no matter how you rotate it, it stays symmetrical. And boom, we now have ourselves a 3C piece. But sadly, none of us had the capacity to actually make it, so the design faded away into obscurity. That is, until a mysterious user joined the Hypercuber server. The news about mass-produced 2x2x2x2s inspired me to pick up my self-made 2x2x2x2 again for the first time in a while. Now, I was actually curious about his self-made design, so I asked more questions about it. He told me that it actually wasn't too hard to build, so I challenged him to build Luna's design for the 2x2x2x3. And to my surprise, Grant completely accepted the challenge and started working on it. Grant should show his design to the mailing list just to make sure that everyone thought it was correct. And this is where things took a turn for the, uh, interesting, shall we say. Grant made his post to the mailing list and a person called Ed responded. I can't see octahedra in the physical 2x2x2x3, which are essential in the physical 2x2x2x2 and represent the cells. Grant then responded with this rendering of the unfolded net of a 2x2x2x3. The new 3C pieces end up looking all like cool and fragmented and are in between opposite halves of the octahedral cells. Melinda then responded saying, I want to be clear that I don't feel that it matters how the stickers, faces, and cubies are shaped. The only thing that matters is that the puzzle's state graph matches that in the virtual versions. Of course, it's also helpful if the implementation makes the puzzle's topology clear, which is what Grant showed in his unfolded diagram. I agree with Melinda's topological considerations concerning the physical 2x2x2x2, but the possibility to assemble the little cubes in octahedra is very pleasant and essential for presenting a solved state of the puzzle. My impression is that the idea to be able to extend the concept of Melinda's physical 2x2x2x2 in the direction of a 2x2x2x3 has no chance to work correctly and does in some way underestimate the uniqueness and phenomenality of Melinda's invention, a holy grail. Well, Ed was just plain wrong, and despite this weird little drama, the puzzle was completed after a month of designing and printing and having to double the amount of magnets in each piece again, making it the second ever physical version of a four-dimensional puzzle. The whole community was super stoked about this groundbreaking new invention. Grant was now the second person to have ever made a physical four-dimensional twisty puzzle. He made a YouTube video showing off the legal twists and how it matched the virtual puzzle in Magic Puzzle Ultimate exactly. Now all we needed was a gyro algorithm. Back in December, Luna had made some drawings of potential gyroed states of the puzzle, but we had no algorithms to get there. 
Thankfully though, it didn't turn out to be that bad. It starts by taking the corners off the puzzle and gyroing them like a normal 2 to the 4. Then doing these funny twisty moves to the 3C pieces. And finally, assembling the whole thing back together. And voila, the 2x2x2x3 was fully functional. But naturally, Hypercubers wanted to take it to the next level. Just a couple of hours after Grant's initial rendering of the 2x2x2x3, Hypercubers were already wondering what would come next. The obvious thing to do is to just increase the 2x2x2x3 into a 2x2x3x3, edging our way closer and closer to the holy grail, a physical 3x3x3x3. But let's not get carried away. Looking at the 2x2x3x3 in Magic Puzzle Ultimate, we again see that it's just adding another middle layer. This new middle layer means that we run into the same familiar problem. The 2x2x3x3 would again require a new type of piece, the two-colored piece. Remember Luna's original sketches for the 2x2x2x3? Well, there was another sketch of an idea for the middle layer of a physical 3x3x3x3. The 2C piece she drew was in the shape of a skew, where the corners collectively make up one sticker, and the centers are the other sticker. The problem with this design is that it can't be rotated. There's no way to twist it in 3D space to make red go to white and white go to red. So, it was back to the drawing board. After Grant pointed out this problem, Hakdar CE, inventor of the legendary Hyperspeed Cube program, proposed this idea for the 2C piece. After using this new piece, Grant made a rendering of what the 2x2x3x3 would look like. A month or so later, Grant was ready to start this design, but not before he ran out of orange filament. He ordered more, but it turned out to be a slightly different color. It took a while to get the designs just right, but after printing and assembling 4 of the new 2C pieces and 8 more 3C pieces, the puzzle was completed on May 14th, 2022. Now it was time to find the gyro algorithm. It starts by removing the middle layer, and then gyroing just like the 2x2x2x3, which involves separating that middle layer and then gyroing like a 2x2x2x2. Next, the middle layer has some 4-dimensional black magic done to it, and then finally, the puzzle is reassembled into the gyroed state. But then Grant realized that some of the 2x2x3 cell moves aren't accessible, meaning that we actually need a second type of gyro. This secondary gyro involves centering a 2x2x3 cell and then making the middle layer stick out like this. And now the puzzle was fully functional. Having two new 4D puzzles created in only four months began to raise a new question. Just how many physical 4D puzzles could we build? The next logical step to take after the 2x2x3x3 was 2x3x3x3, which once again requires a new piece type, the 1C. Grant literally just reused the 4C piece design, except using pieces of all the same color. During production, Grant actually ran out of magnets and had to order more and wait for them to arrive. Other than that though, the production went pretty smoothly, and after printing 8 more 3C and 2C pieces, and 2 of the new 1C pieces, the puzzle was completed on July 6, 2022. Now, given what we've seen before with the previous gyro algorithms, you'd think that the 2x3x3x3 needs an extremely long, complicated, recursive gyro, and although the design of the puzzle has at least 15 different possible types of gyros, it turns out that it actually doesn't need one at all. All the moves are accessible from this state, which makes for a really, really nice solving experience. The fourth ever physical 4D puzzle was constructed, bringing us closer and closer to our ultimate goal, the physical 3x3x3x3. Also, this video is sponsored by TheCubicle.com. The Cubicle is currently the best cube store on the market, with an amazing selection of puzzles, accessories, apparel, apparel, I don't know how apparel. to say that word. So if you're looking to buy some new puzzles or give them as a gift, then head over to thecubicle.com and don't forget to use my discount code ROWAN to save 5% off. It really goes towards helping out the channel and make more content just like this. So thank you so, so much, and let's get on with the video. With the expansion of Melinda's 2x2x2x2 through the Hypercuboid series, only one puzzle remained unmade, the physical 3x3x3x3. A true four-dimensional analog of the classic 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube. Shortly after figuring out all the designs for the different piece types, 
Grant created this rendering. 80 hypercubies made from 552 plastic pieces, 3,840 magnets. I can't believe that progress is being made toward the Holy Grail. The cost and effort doesn't matter since one will have to be made if it's at all possible. It also doesn't matter how clumsy it is to operate, though of course to get it into multiple people's hands, we'll want to explore every possible way to improve it. After months and months of effort, Grant completed assembling the puzzle on July 22nd, 2022. Okay, but wait, wait, stop, stop, pause the music. Why the hell does it look like this? What the frick is with these sticky outy bits? How is this a representation of a 4D Rubik's Cube? Okay, so to answer this question, let's first think about how we could make a 2x2x2 using only two-dimensional space. After some thought, a design like this comes to mind. Now, let's expand it through the series of cuboids. Now we can see that the problem happens because we have one more slice than the number of dimensions we're using. A 3x3x3 has three slice layers, but in two dimensions, there's only room to symmetrically arrange two of them, so the third one ends up on the outside like this. Now, bringing this back up a dimension, we need four slice layers, but we only have room to arrange three of them symmetrically, so the fourth slice sticks out like this. To this day, Grant has not scrambled or solved the physical 3x3x3x3 due to its low usability. The most that was ever done on it was a checkerboard algorithm. But then Hypercubers member Akai made a new program that simulated it, and then HyperSB was the first person to ever fully solve the 3 to the 4 using Akai's program. The actual gyros are pretty painful to do, but luckily this program does them for you. But still, this puzzle was a truly monumental feat. In just under six months, the community went from having one physical 4D puzzle to having five. The holy grail was finally achieved, and hypercubers could rest happy. That's the end of the story for puzzles that actually got physically made. But during this whole process, there were plenty of renderings for other puzzles that haven't been built yet. First of all, the hypercube slash hypercuboid family is pretty much infinitely extendable. So for example, here is a rendering of a 4x4x4x4. Jasper also made a design for a pentagonal duo prism, but we're still not sure if it would be fully functional or not because of the symmetries that a gyro requires. In May of 2022, we thought about trying to make physical floppy hypercubes, or hypercuboids where one of the dimensions is always by one. At first, this seemed really tricky because we needed a piece with five colors, but eventually Grant found a design that was symmetrical. After going through some more design iterations, we came across one that we really liked. The 3x3x3x1 can turn just like a 3x3x3, but also with the addition of moves that can rotate aside 180 degrees in any plane. And this design is also infinitely extendable to any A by B by C by 1 hypercuboid. Next, Grant wondered if we could go even smaller to the A by B by 1 by 1 family. One day, Grant was on a walk when suddenly the idea struck him. In order to make A by B by 1 by 1s into physical puzzles, we would have to introduce a new concept. Moving parts. Despite this horrible abomination looking like a drone, it matches the virtual puzzle exactly. Valid turns include normal 2 by 2 by 1 turns, as well as turning two adjacent rings by the same amount. And of course, it can be extended into any floppy hypercuboid. Next, in August of 2022, Hypercubers member Schmizad randomly challenged Grant to build a simplex, which is like a 4D pyramid. But Grant wasn't too familiar with a simplex, and later, Hypercubers member Mark took it upon himself to dive deep into the world of the physical simplex. Mark started with trying to build a normal 3D pyramid using only two dimensions, and after some brainstorming, a functional 2D pyramid design was found. And then using dimensional analogies, this was translated up to a 3D design of the 4D simplex. And finally, Hypercubers wondered if it would ever be possible to physically build representations of even higher dimensional puzzles. 
Let's start with a 2x2x2x2x2, or 2 to the 5. It has 32 pieces, each of which has 5 colors. And this is a problem because there's no way to symmetrically arrange 5 points in 3D space to make an actual 5C piece. But maybe we don't need to arrange them symmetrically? If we restrict ourselves to a certain set of moves, like 180 degree turns along the fifth dimension, then we can reduce the amount of colors on one axis. Let's bring it down a dimension to see if we can find a design to build a restricted 2 to the 4 in 2D space. Something like this works, and here, the fourth dimension isn't projected the same way that others are. The only colors that will ever be in these circular spots are pink and purple. And then translating this idea up a dimension, Mark made this rendering, and then this rendering of what a single turn would look like. And then finally, Mark made a rendering of a 2 to the 6, which would be forced to 180 degree turns along two of its dimensions. Now that we have all of these theoretical designs, we need your help. If any of you watching have a 3D printer, then please, please help us make our dreams a reality. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you will join me in the fourth dimension.